Hello and thank you for joining us for Central Online. Let us know that you're here, speak in the chat, say hello to your neighbours as you would in person. It's so good to have you with us. We have an amazing service for you today. We have Julie bringing the word on being still and moving forward. And then following that we have Sam leading us in communion and then we have a special announcement from Ben. And finally, starting tonight, we have our Alpha Online, the very first time we're doing it online. This is gonna be amazing. Alpha is a great way for you to discuss some of life's biggest questions. I've done it myself, it's great fun. You meet a lot of great people and you get a lot of good discussion out of it. So please, link is in the description. You can sign up there and you can even invite people. Email them, WhatsApp them, send a letter via Pigeon. Invite your world, because right now I'm inviting you. When you join the chat, say, hey, Mark Morrison invited me, and you won't regret it. So now I'm just gonna hand over to the worship team.
Good morning, church. I hope you are well. I hope you're keeping safe at this time. And I'm sure this morning you are snuggled up on your sofa watching church online with a coffee in your hand. And if you're lucky enough, you've maybe got your coffee in your back in your bed. Um, for those that don't have kids, that have kids, that wouldn't be you um, this morning. But it's great to be with you this morning and to share with you. And I've got a message that God has really put on my heart to share with you this morning. And the title of that message this morning is called Be Still and Move Forward. I know it sounds like a bit of a contradiction moving forward while being still. But you know, as believers, we should always be moving forward. And I know that sometimes things come into our life that can stop us in our tracks. Unexpected things come into our world that can slow us down a little bit. A global pandemic being one of them things that certainly slowed us down. But two weeks ago, I was asked to share at an outreach event in Glasgow. I shared there last summer. Um, I shared our sto or my story there. And they asked me to come back on the first Sunday of January and just share with them um, my highlights of 2000, my reflection, Mayor, so uh, 2020, what God was doing in me, what God was saying, and what 2020 was going to look like for me. And if I'm honest, it threw me a little bit because my reflection on 2020, how could I put into words what 2020 looked like for me? Did he want me to be really honest? But the conclusion I came to was this, that although 2020 was a year like we have never known, where it was an absolute roller coaster of emotions, it was the year that all of our lives slowed down. So I had learned in 2020 how to slow down. Yes, we were forced into it, but something, it was something that I had been trying to do for years, to be more present in the moment instead of going from one thing to the next, like I often did. For years, I, Paul had been saying to me, you need to live in the moment, enjoy the moment you're in, because I would always be, right, that's done, on the next thing now and on the next thing, but learning how to be more present in the moment that we, we, that we were in. So apart from work, if you were unable to work from home, everything else that we loved to do had stopped. We had no option but to be still and wait to wait for the update, to wait to see when the schools were opening again. And it was just a constant waiting game, wasn't it? But the verse that I have held on to and that I've really been praying into is a very well-known verse. And I'm gonna share some of that with you this morning. And it's found in Psalm 46, verse 10. It says this, be still and know that I am God. This Psalm, has always been an encouragement to me, and I'm sure to you as well. But over the last nine or 10 months, I've really had to live it out like never before. It's a popular verse. It's a verse that we use for comforting other people. It's a verse we use for comforting ourselves. But many people tend to think that this verse means to rest or to relax in who God is. We often see this verse, don't we, on a plaque in somebody's wall in their house, or we see it on a on an Instagram post with a lovely beach in the background, all peaceful. And I know that we would all love to be on a peaceful beach, and I'm believing that them days are coming again. But this verse, although it encourages us as believers to reflect on who God is, there are 11 other verses in this psalm. Verse 10 is actually more of a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call to be in awe of who God is than a gentle call to rest. Taking time out of our day to meditate on scripture and be silent, waiting and listening to God is mentioned in other sections of scripture. But let me read the full Psalm to you this morning. Psalm 46 says this, God is our refuge and our strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when the earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea let the oceans roar and foam, let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city, it cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here amongst us. 
the God of Israel is our fortress. Come see the glorious work of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honoured by every nation. I will be honoured throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's army is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Psalm 46 is actually a song of victory. It is set in the context of catastrophic chaos, troublesome times and incredible uncertainty. And that maybe sounds familiar to you this morning. The writer's world was falling apart all around him. And there's so much that we can take and apply from this psalm this morning. So as I have read and studied this, I see three parts of this psalm and I want to have a look at them with you this morning. So the first thing is this, we can depend on God because of his promise. He is for you this morning. Verses one to three says, God is our refuge and our strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when the earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam, let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. This is God's promise to us that he is for us. He is our refuge and our strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So there's no need to fear. The great D.L. Moody said, God never made a promise that was too good to be true. Now I know that we all get fearful at times. That is why I summed up my 2020 as a roller coaster of emotions, times where I was fearful, times where I felt I had no strength. But one promise that remained throughout that time of uncertainty and still today as we face so much uncertainty is that God is and will always be our refuge and our strength. That's why we are able to experience peace in the midst of chaos. Sometimes we just need to remind ourselves of his promise to us. And I know that that can be difficult as we are faced with yet another lockdown. But I want to encourage you to connect with people. Don't be on your own. Don't be sitting in your house on your own. Connect with people. It's so important that you connect with people. You know, you can join a, a connect group. You can, you know, sign up for Alpha, but connect with people. There's, there's something just about being together and encouraging one another. The best thing I did in 2020 was join a life group. It was one of the best things I did. We encourage each other in God's word and his promises for us. We hate days for one struggling and we lift the other one up and, and we laugh together and we cry together, but it, it's just great to come together and encourage each other in God's word. But he is for you this morning. The Bible says, if God is for you, then who can be against you? There are so many promises in his word to us, but this one reminds us that he is our refuge, even in the midst of total destruction. And our world can look like that just now. You just need to watch the news for 10 minutes to see the destruction that's going on. But he is our eternal refuge and can provide strength for us in any circumstance that we face this morning. The second thing is this, we can depend on God because of his presence. He is with you. Let me read verses four to seven to you. It says, a river brings joy to the city of our God the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city, it cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here amongst us. The God of Israel is our fortress. God promises us shelter when we seek it. Fortunately, we don't need to look far to find him because his presence is right here with us. Verse four paints us a picture that is easy to miss. The city of God is Jerusalem. It was a beautiful city, but it didn't have a river running through it like all the other towns and cities had in those days. Jerusalem might not have had a river, but it had something even better. 
the river of God, the very presence of God. The title Most High translated is Elion, which refers to God as the highest over all. He is sovereign and supreme and is present with us. God's grace flows like a river to bring gladness and joy to his people. That's me and that's you. No matter how bad things get, we can be assured that the presence of God is with us. In my early days as a Christian, I had some incredible encounters in the presence of God where the Holy Spirit was tangible and it was easy for me to see that God was moving in my life. But what about when he wasn't as visible and obvious? Did that make him any less God? We are assured in verse 7 that the Lord of heaven's armies is with us. That is incredible. The Lord of heaven's armies is with us this morning. Exodus 33 verse 14 reads this, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Moses is asking God who he will send to help him and God reassures Moses that he will be with him. Moses wants specifics though. So often in our life, we want God to be specific. But very often, that's not how God operates. What God does say, though, is that he will be with Moses. Therefore, he can relax. Perhaps you're watching this morning and that's your experience. You're looking to God for specifics. I would encourage you this morning to make your move and see what God does. We are waiting for God to move, but he is waiting for us to move. His promise to us and always will be, I will be with you. We can depend on God because of, third thing is, his power. His power, he is above you. Verses 8 to 11 says, Come and see the glorious work of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and he snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honoured by every nation. I will be honoured throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here amongst us. The God of Israel is our fortress. You see, we can depend on God because of his promise, because of his presence, and lastly, because of his power. Verse 8 tells us that we are to come and see the glorious work of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I was blessed and very emotional watching Jim Conan share his story last week. The power of God, not only to transform Jim, but to keep him and to enable him then to help other people who are looking for change in their lives. I have been encouraged by the amount of people who don't come to church, who have been tuning in to our online services. My family message often and tell me how they've enjoyed church. Friends that don't come to church, our neighbours tune in most weeks and watch our online services and tell me how much they've enjoyed it. What a great witness and testimony it has been to chat with them about church and about the Lord. That is definitely a plus to the, our online services. People are seeking the Lord now more than they ever have. As a church, our location may have changed, but our mission hasn't. We are to keep moving forward, to keep sharing the love of God, to keep being there for each other. You know, verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible, but I missed the point of it for years. Being still doesn't mean hitting the pause button and expecting God to move in our lives. This verse is actually a command. In the midst of all the madness, and all the chaos going on all around us, we are to let God be God. Being still paints a picture of surrender. We are to give him control of our lives this morning, knowing that he is and always will be in control. I don't know if you're watching this morning and you have never given God control of your life. I would encourage you this morning, if you are thinking um, about giving God control of your life, get in touch with somebody, somebody who will point you in the right direction, who will pray with you and come alongside you, but it will be the best decision you will ever make. 
You know what? Martin Luther King says this, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Yes, this pandemic has changed how we live. It's tested our faith, it's tried our patience, it's cost jobs and it's taken people that we love. But it is also developing a deeper reliance on God. We need to be people who hold on to his promise. He is for you. His presence, he is with you. And his power, he is above you. So let God move, but make sure that you keep moving forward with him. If God is for you, then who can be against you? Let's pray together. God, I thank you for, your, for every person who has tuned in this morning. And I pray that in this season of uncertainty, we would always be certain of who you are. I pray for those who are feeling worn out, who are dealing with difficult situations, that God, you would bring strength to them this morning. And we pray that we would be people that are continually moving forward. We thank you for being our strong foundation and I pray a blessing over each person who is watching this this morning. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
absolutely fantastic word. I'm sure everyone's been encouraged at home. We're now going to go into a time of communion together. Um, and I want to read you two verses which have really meant a lot to me over lockdown. I'm sure a lot of you have heard them. I've probably already said them at some point online. And I'm sure you've probably read them at home. And it's in John 16, verse 32 to 33. And they can feel really applicable as, as we're in lockdown again just now. And it says this, A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. What does take heart mean? It's not really something you would hear in regular vocabulary just now. But take heart, it basically means be encouraged, take comfort, be optimistic. You know, just now it's really difficult to feel optimistic because, well, just this weekend, restrictions have got even stricter. We're no longer allowed to go in the Chinese to get a Chinese. We have to wait outside. Times are getting really tough. But you see, things can feel really difficult just now. But you see, Jesus encourages us here to take heart. You know, how can we take heart just now? You know, my question would be, how could Jesus even take heart? You know, Jesus said this at the point before he, he'd been to the cross, before he'd been betrayed, before he'd been mocked, before he'd been beaten, before he'd been whipped. You know, Jesus knew what was coming, but he was able to say the words, take heart, for I have overcome the world. You know, today we're going to come together and we're going to remember what Jesus has done for us. You know, he overcame that world by dying on the cross. His body was broken. His blood was spilled. You know, he was separated from the Father so that we would not be separated. You know, the veil was torn. That which separated us from God was taken away so that we could have full relationship with him. You know, that's why we remember. That's why we do communion every week. It's to remember what Jesus has done for us. To remind ourselves that no matter what goes on in this world, we can take heart because Jesus has the ultimate victory. So no matter what you're facing just now, maybe you've just had the worst week possible. Maybe you've experienced loss. Maybe you've experienced unemployment. Whatever it may be, you know, we can take heart because Jesus has overcame the world. So let's come together just now. We're going to remember his body that was broken, his blood that was shed. It seems like a sad thing. It seems like something that you know, is not a, a nice thing to remember. But Jesus did it for us. You know, we remember that it's victory. We remember that he defeated death. He defeated sin. You know, we are now forgiven. You know, we're going to go into a time of worship. Let's take the bread. Let's take the juice. And let's remember what Jesus has done for us. Amen. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus He didn't want heaven without us So Jesus, He
that word and to sound for that communion. We're now just going to hear a little announcement from our senior pastor, Ben. And it's senior, not because of age, but it's more of a, an authority thing. Hello church and anyone who's watching online, I want to say welcome to you to 2021. Um, it's been quite a tough start to the year. It kind of hit us like a ton of bricks. Uh, a couple of people within the fellowship have lost loved ones and our prayers are with the families of John Duthie and Ian Ross just now. Many people have been taken into hospital that we're praying for too. And of course, the restrictions changed, didn't they? We're kind of back into lockdown and we can't meet in person. So we've had to, to reshape our plans a little bit. But one of the things that we want to continue with that we were going to focus on at this time was prayer. And we're starting to pray for people. That starts commencing this week coming and uh, it's going to start on Tuesday night with a Zoom prayer event and we want to encourage everyone to come on to zoom we'll get the links out to you to get onto the call and uh, we'll explain more about what's going to be happening over this period of time we want it to be a season of prayer and fasting that is focused on praying for people and we want to focus on four areas we want to pray for the well-being of people physically we're going to pray for health people that need healing and are going through so much, obviously with COVID and many other things at this time as well. We want to pray for people's spiritual well-being as well. I want to see people saved and want to see people coming into a real relationship and having a real encounter with Jesus at this time as well. We want to also pray for people's emotional well-being, um, uh, people that have lost, people that are in grief, um, and various other things that are affecting people emotionally at this time. And finally, for mental well-being as well, which we know has been a real struggle for so many people over this last year and still is now. And so we want to get together and pray for one another. Pray for the people in your community. Pray, pray for the people in your street and in your world, really. Galatians 6 and 2 says this, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfilling the law of Christ to bear each other up in prayer is so important. So we're going to have that focus to pray for people. I want to start with 21 days of fasting as well, starting on the 21st of this month, 21 one 21. We're going to do 21 days of fasting. And that means that anyone watching online cannot eat anything for that whole period of 21 days. Of course, it doesn't mean that. Some people might be doing that, but we want to ask you to take at least one day where you pray and you fast and that'll get a real appreciation within you. And if you make that sacrifice, we really believe that God will do great things. And so for that 21 day period, people are going to be fasting and we're going to have a rota of fasting and it's going to be covered for, for that whole season as well. And thirdly and, and, and finally, we want to encourage people to start prayer walking. Now, our intention would have been when we're in tier four to have prayer nights with 20 people were allowed in at that point, but that is gone and we're not allowed to meet at all. So we want to encourage you, there's a lot of people walking and running just now and uh, as part of physical well-being as well and health, we want to encourage people though to start prayer walking and uh, just, just getting out there, um, hopefully on your own and just you and the Lord and praying for people praying for, for, for these areas of prayer that we're speaking about. And uh, so we are hoping as a church to take on a challenge and together, unitedly, uh, achieve and accomplish 2021K, 2021 kilometres together of prayer walking over this next season. So you can sign up on Eventbrite uh, at five kilometres a time. And we want to really encourage you to do that, as many people as possible, to get on and to take just how many kilometres you can within this period. And uh, it would be great just to, to encourage people to get out there and pray. Maybe you want to, to, to go for prayer runs. Maybe that's what you're, you're, you're thinking of as well. Maybe it's a prayer drive. That's not going to count within the kilometres. But um, whatever way you can get out there and just pray for people around your community, around your streets, around the schools, the hospitals, or if there's just a community that you feel that the Lord's put in your heart, we want you 
to get out there and pray. We want this to be a season of focus that we pray for people. Let's get involved. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Ben, for that announcement. So there's plenty of stuff for you to get involved with in the life of the church up and coming. The Pray for People event and Alpha happening tonight. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.